Hey, it's Wednesday. I'm Matthew Alaria, and you're watching the Faith for Life broadcast. Let's pray and release faith over today's broadcast, and then we're going to get right into the Word. Father, we do thank you again today, Lord, for your Word. Lord, we ask you today for revelation of your Word. We ask you today for grace and help to receive your Word, to put it into practice, and to see it work in our lives. And Father, I release faith over everybody watching the broadcast today, and I thank you that they will be helped and ministered to in a great and in a mighty way by your Spirit through this broadcast. And Lord, I do thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, all this week on the broadcast, we're doing a series of teachings entitled, It Pays to Live Godly. And what we're finding out is that living for God and living a godly life, respecting Him and demonstrating godly character, that it benefits us in this life and in the world to come. In fact, let's go back over to 1 Timothy chapter 4, and we're going to look at verse 8 there. This is our foundation text for this week on the broadcast. 1 Timothy 4.8 says this, For bodily exercise profits a little, but godliness is profitable unto all things having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. The expanded Bible says serving God brings you blessings in this life and in the future life. And so that verse is telling us that when we live for God and we serve Him, we can expect it to benefit us both now in this life and later after this life. Now, when it talks about that it will profit us, the word profit deals with the idea that it will lead to, living for God will lead to our success, our well-being, our prosperity, and our happiness. Now, look at verse 9, which comes right after verse 8. <laughs> verse 9 says this, This is a faithful saying, and worthy of all exception. The Amplified Bible says this saying is reliable and worthy of complete acceptance by everybody. Now what saying? The saying in verse 8 that says godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. That saying is supposed to be accepted by everybody. Verse 9 says, This saying is reliable and worthy of complete acceptance by everybody. And so, friend, we are supposed to accept the truth that godliness is profitable both in this life and in the world to come. Now, a lot of people don't accept that truth. They tell you that living for God and serving Him doesn't mean that you're going to be happy and prosperous in this life. And they get upset and they get adamant about it. Well, friend, when you take that stance, you're rejecting a truth that the Bible tells you everybody should accept. In fact, in Psalm 35, 27, it says this, Let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. Come on, people that favor God's righteous cause. Should they be happy in their lives? Should they be enjoying happiness? Should they be glad? Or should they be miserable and sad? Well, this scripture says that they should uh, shout for joy and be glad. And then it says, let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified which has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. And so we're supposed to say continually that God takes pleasure in my prosperity. God takes pleasure in my being well and being happy and being successful and, and prospering. God likes it when I'm doing well and when I'm happy and when I'm prospering and having success. God likes that. That's what we're supposed to say continually. And yet many people are saying the opposite continually. They say God doesn't care about our prosperity. God never promised us a good life. That statement I shared with you uh, early on this week on the broadcast where 
I saw something posted on social media by a Christian organization that said God doesn't promise us good days. He promises us a great eternity. What's that? That's leaving the idea that God's pretty much indifferent about our prosperity and our happiness and our well-being in the earth. Now, he does care about it, but only when we get to heaven. Well, friend, I got, I got two daughters. I got Faith, who's five, just started kindergarten, and Grace, who's eight, and she just started third grade. That would be like me saying, well, I don't really care if you're happy and, and, and healthy and, and successful at school. I only care about it when you're at home. That when you're home, that's when I want you to be happy and, and enjoy your life. But when you go to school, I don't care. No, that, that's, that's ignorant. I don't have two different wills for them based on their location. I want them to be happy. I want them to be prosperous. I want them to be successful everywhere they are all the time. And the same is true about our good father. He doesn't have a different will for you when you get to heaven than when you do, than, when, than he does when you're on this earth. Now you'll be able to enjoy different levels of prosperity and happiness in heaven because there's no curse and no, no devil. But God wants you to enjoy those things right here and now in the earth. And so again, we are supposed to accept this truth that godliness is profitable that living for God and serving Him is profitable and it promotes our prosperity and our happiness and our well-being in this life and in the world to come. Many are fighting against that truth. 1 Timothy 4, 9 says that everybody is supposed to accept it. Now, the reason why many people reject this idea of godliness profiting us and leading to our prosperity and happiness is because they have a, a hard time balancing that reality with the reality that in this life we will experience tribulations and persecutions and challenges. Many reject this idea of godliness profiting us in the name of persecutions and trials. In other words, many people believe because we're told that we will be persecuted and because we are told that we will experience challenges in this life, then that means we're not promised prosperity. You know, 2 Timothy 3.12 says, all that live godly in Christ will suffer persecution. And so how can that be that godliness will profit you in this life, but you will also experience persecution in this life? And people have a hard time balancing those two truths. Jesus said in John 16, in the world, you will have tribulation. Tribulations means trials, tests, challenges, afflictions, persecutions. And so people have a hard time balancing these two realities that, that I'm going to experience challenges in this life, but I can also prosper in this life. They don't know how to reckon. They don't know how to balance those two realities. Well, friend, here's something you need to lay hold of. Prosperity and doing well in this life doesn't mean no challenges. A lot of times when people hear they're against prosperity and they're against people who preach prosperity because they think prosperity means no challenges, no tests, no trials, no affliction, no persecution. Well, Jesus taught prosperity with persecution. In Mark 10, verse 29 Jesus said this, There's no man that has left house, brethren, sisters, father, mother, wife, children, or lands for my sake and the gospels, but he will receive a hundredfold now in this time houses and brethren and sisters and mothers and children and lands. Stop right there. He's saying that if you, if you live for God and if you leave things for his sake and the gospel's sake, you're going to receive a hundredfold now in this life. Well, what is he saying? He's saying godliness will profit you now in this life. And so there's the profiting side of it. There's the prosperity side of it. But then he finishes the verse up and says, with persecutions. And so you're going to receive a hundredfold of these things that you've sacrificed for me. You're going to receive a hundredfold of them now in this life with persecutions and in the world to come eternal life. And so Jesus taught prosperity with persecution. 
He taught that you will prosper. You will reap a hundredfold and you're going to be persecuted. And so, friend, you don't have to pick prosperity or persecution. You're, you can pick both. You can pick, well, I'm going to prosper and I'm going to have success and I'm going to do well. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm never going to be challenged. That doesn't mean that I'm never going to come under attack. That doesn't mean that I'm never going to be persecuted. But I'm going to prosper and, and godliness and living for God is going to profit me in this life. And again, this is why many people reject this idea of, of godliness profiting us and godliness leading to our prosperity and our happiness and our success. They reject it because they know, well, I'm, I'm going to be, I know the scripture tells me I'm going to experience challenges. I'm going to experience tests. And so how can I believe in prosperity? Well, again, living godly doesn't ensure that you will never face a challenge. Living godly doesn't ensure that you'll never come under attack. Living godly doesn't mean that you're never going to have any problems or never experience any negative circumstances. But living godly, if we will live godly, we can be helped, we can be delivered, and we can enjoy victory over every challenge. So I want to say it to you again, godliness, it does not ensure that you will never encounter a challenge. It doesn't ensure that. If you live for God, that doesn't mean that you're never going to have any problems. And some people are surprised when they do experience a challenge. They're like, well, I'm a Christian. I'm a faith person. I'm, I believe the word. Why am I having these challenges? <laughs> In the world, you'll have tribulation. You're going to experience challenges. You're going to experience attacks. You'll experience um, the enemy coming against you in a negative way. And so living for God and godliness doesn't ensure that you will never face a challenge. But if we will live godly, it does ensure that we will be helped, we will be delivered, and we will enjoy victory over every challenge. Godliness will profit you. Now, a lot of people in their attack against this idea of godliness profiting you and leading to your prosperity and happiness and well-being, a lot of people in their attempt to reject that truth, they try to use the Apostle Paul's life. And they'll say things like, look at the Apostle Paul. How can you preach prosperity and happiness and God wants you to prosper and be happy? How can you preach that? Look at the Apostle Paul. He experienced all kinds of challenges and attacks. And so I want to look at some of these verses and let's look at the Apostle Paul's life in the scripture. Because what you're going to find out is he was a prosperous man. The Apostle Paul lived godly and it led to his well-being. And when you're talking about prosperity, a lot of times people have the wrong idea about the definition of prosperity. They see pro When they hear prosperity, they see dollar signs. And prosperity deals with you doing well in every area of your life, which would include your finances and your provision, but it includes doing well in every area of your life. If you look up the word prosperity, you run into the, the Hebrew and the Greek meaning, it means to do well. And so the apostle Paul was a prosperous man. He did well in his life. It says in 2 Timothy 3.11, persecutions, afflictions, which came to me at Antioch and Iconium, and at Lystra, what persecutions I endured. And so living godly did not ensure that he would never encounter an attack. He's in the middle of these attacks and experiencing them, you know, it seemed like almost daily in his ministry. And he said this, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, and Iconium, and at Lystra, what persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Verse 12, he said, all that will live godly in Christ will suffer persecution. And so there you have it right there. He's saying, I did experience some challenges. I did experience some attacks. I did experience some trials. And his godly life didn't keep him from that. But what his godly life did do, it led to him being delivered out of every challenge, out of every attack, in fact, in the next chapter, 2 Timothy 4, we read on yesterday's broadcast, he said that he had been delivered out of the mouth of the lion. 
And so the Apostle Paul, his godly life didn't ensure that he never experienced any challenges. But what it did ensure is he enjoyed victory over them all. And so he did not live a defeated, struggling, broken existence. He is prospering. Let me tell you, friend, when you are delivered out of all afflictions and all persecutions and you endured, when you were delivered out of them all, you're prospering. That is prosperity. You are doing well. And why was he able to do well in the middle of those attacks? Because he lived a godly life? We said, well, I don't understand how you can preach that God wants you to live a happy life. Look at Paul's life. Paul was thrown in prison for no good reason at all. <laughs> in Acts chapter 16, and in the prison, him and Silas started singing praises to the Lord. Paul's the one that said, rejoice always. And again, I say rejoice. He preached happiness. <laughs> he preached joy. And friend, as believers, if we will live godly lives, we can be delivered. doesn't mean you won't ever experience attack. What it does mean is you can be helped and enjoy victory over every negative attack that you experience. Christianity done right is a victorious existence. And if we paint Christianity as a struggling, persecuted, impoverished, defeated existence, we do so at the expense of the scripture because the scripture does not paint Christianity as some broken, impoverished, defeated existence. It paints Christianity as a victorious existence. The Apostle Paul just said in that verse, I experienced a bunch of challenges, a bunch of attacks, but I was delivered out of them all. In fact, let's read some more verses about the Apostle Paul. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 10 now, Paul, history books tell us that Paul's writing to the church at Philippi from prison. And so he's in prison when he's writing this, and he said, But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly. Sounds like he's happy. That now at your last care of me, that now, that now at the last your care of me has flourished again, wherein you were also careful. In other words, you wanted to help me, but you lacked opportunity. He said, Not that I respect of want. For I have learned in whatever state I'm in therewith to be content. I know how to be abased. I know how to bound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And then in verse 18 he said, But I have all and I abound. I am full having received of the things which were sent from you, an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God. And so he's obviously in prison, which is not a great place to be, and, and he wanted to be delivered from it. But in prison, what is he saying? He's saying, I have everything I need. I, I'm content. I'm happy. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And then he said in verse 18, he said, I, I am full and I abound, and I have everything that I need. It wasn't that he wasn't experience any, any, experiencing any challenges. But in the middle of this, friend, he's pro, this is prosperity. He's doing well. Now, in, in Romans 8, 35, he said this, Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril our sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Again, he's experiencing some challenges, but he says we're more than a conqueror. For 2 Corinthians 4, 8 says we're troubled. He said we're troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We're perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Friend, if you paint Christianity as some weak, defeated existence and you try to use Paul's life to back it up, Paul didn't live a defeated existence. He didn't live a broken and impoverished life. He did experience some challenges. He did experience some attacks. But out of his own mouth, he said, the Lord delivered me out of them all. And so godliness, friends, should be profiting us. 
We shouldn't be living under the devil's thumb day after day after day. You might be experiencing some challenges and you might be experiencing some attacks, but if you respect God, if you love him, if you trust him, if you have faith in him, then those challenges and those attacks, friend, you can overcome it. Your godliness should be profiting you in your life. Praise the Lord. Now, as we close of today's broadcast, I want to remind you of these three things. Number one, we are to accept the truth that living godly will profit us in this life. Number two, many reject the idea of godliness profiting us, and they do it in the name of persecutions and trials. What am I saying? So because people believe we're spo- that we're going to experience trials and challenges and attacks, they don't believe in prosperity. And then number three, living godly doesn't ensure that you never face a challenge. But godliness ensures that we can be helped, delivered, and enjoy victory over every challenge. Let's pray. Father, Lord, we thank you today that right in the middle of challenges, right in the middle of attacks, that if we will live for you and serve you and respect you, that we can be helped and enjoy victory over every challenge. Lord, we thank you that that godliness, that serving you, living for you, profits us in this life. And Lord, I thank you that everybody watching the broadcast today, that as they serve you, as they respect you, as they live their life in such a way that's pleasing to you, I thank you that out of that will come victory and, and deliverance and success in every challenge that they're facing. And Lord, we do thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Friend, thank you so much for watching today's broadcast. Now, don't forget to come back tomorrow for Thursday's edition of our Faith for Life broadcast. And we're going to continue this series entitled, It Pays to Live Godly. We'll see you then.